to break into um, that because Jeremy Corbyn is talking in Chingford at a rally where he's going to announce Labour's new policy to scrap universal credit. Let's have a listen. Also, to all those that have come from West Ham this morning to help as well. Because you're all extremely welcome here. I told Lynn Brown last night I'd give you a special welcome because, as you know, she cannot be here today. So thank you to all of you. Thank you to the staff at Greg's. Splendid coffee and a vegan sausage roll for me. <laughs> Unionised company paying proper wages. That's the kind of company we want. Sadly, over there, there's a place that's closed down this week. It's Thomas Cook's. The staff in there are losing their jobs. And the loss of those jobs is devastating for all the individuals concerned and all those that lost their holidays as a result of it. Where was the government when people's jobs were under threat? Where was the government when deregulation takes over and working class people lose their jobs and lose their livelihoods and their communities? A Labour government would have done it very, very differently. Because our priority, our priority would be about saving jobs. We're at a very critical time in our history, a very critical time indeed. The behaviour of the Prime Minister in being found guilty by the Supreme Court of shutting down Parliament and forced to come back to Parliament is a major piece of historical news in this country in every way possible. And what was his response when he got back to Parliament, finally, was to spend a whole lot of time just shouting abuse, abuse at just about everybody. I said to him, democracy elects representatives to be in our parliament to defend that democracy. The idea that you can set up a whole campaign of the people versus parliament, sorry, parliament is a representation of the people, we would stand by democracy within our society. And a Labour government would want to be held accountable to a democratic process. That, Boris Johnson, is how democracy works. And democracy was not given from above, it was won from below by those that campaigned for the right to vote, those that got women the right to vote, those that did so much to change our society. And so, we will do absolutely everything we can to prevent a no-deal exit from the European Union on the 31st of October. We are not going to allow the people of this country to be taken over a cliff edge, knowing full well it will damage medicine supplies, damage the food supply, damage jobs, and lead us straight into the arms of a Donald Trump-inspired free trade deal with the United States. We are simply not going there. And when that no deal is off the table, and the government has finally accepted it must obey an act of parliament that was passed, then, straight into it, we will take them on in every town, every city, every street, every village, and have a general election so we can put an alternative point of view to the people of this country. Including, including, of course, a right to decide on the future relationship with Europe in a referendum under a Labour government that would write fairly decently and give people a choice. A choice between a relationship and a choice between remain. But not no deal, not into the arms of Donald Trump, something sensible to bring people together. The whole point of our party, the whole point of our strategy has been to bring people together. This week we had our conference and uh, there were 13,000 people came to the Labour Party conference and another 5,000 came to the world transformed. A massive demonstration of people's thirst for ideas, for knowledge and to campaign for a, a different and changed and better society. And I was proud to be there and proud to see the enthusiasm of our members. You won't hear about too much of that in the, in the mass media, you won't hear too much about that, but we were there. And many of the announcements that Pfizer just mentioned are incredible. And by the way, and not by the way, centrally to everything, Pfizer is going to be the best MP Chingford's ever had. Yeah. 
because she understands the community, understands the whole political process, understands that this country cannot go on with the levels of division and poverty that we have at the present time. And so when we announced the Green New Deal, a Green New Deal, Green Industrial Revolution, I got a message yesterday from AOC saying thanks very much for being a major party that stands up for the environment in the Western world. Thank you to her for that. Our way forward is to protect the environment, is to give people cleaner air, is people to give people decent public transport, but also create good quality, well-paid, skilled jobs all over the country in areas that have seen no industrial investment in some cases for 40 or 50 years. It's surely the right way forward. Protect the planet and create good quality jobs at the same time. Because it can't be right that our children growing up alongside major roads uh, lose lung capacity before they even get to school because of the foul air they're breathing. It can't be right that Glasgow has the lowest life expectancy in Britain, partly as a result of the social conditions, and so on, all around this country. Let's do things differently, protect the environment, enhance our biodiversity, plant trees in the way that Walton Forest Council is doing, and at the same time, create those jobs. My message simply is, I want to lead a Labour government that provides our young people with hope, security and certainty that they will have a future and they will have a future in a society that cares for all, not just for the few. And so, it's issues of poverty that uh, face this country. <clears throat> we are the fifth richest country in the world. There's no need for anyone to live in poverty in this country. There's no need for anyone to be rough sleeping. There's no need for any child to go to school hungry. There's no need for people to have to go to food banks. There's no need for those in work, when they finish work, to have to go and find a food bank to get enough food to feed their families. And when the United Nations sends a rapporteur to Britain to look into issues of poverty and say the ethos of social security in the welfare state has been replaced by an ethos of a cold, uncaring society. Surely we should just stop and pause for a moment. The United Nations has condemned this country as creating an ethos of an uncaring and brutal society. Surely it's time for a change. So those levels of poverty have to be dealt with and we will absolutely determine to deal with them. Our social security system came from demands of radical people in the 19th century, the early 20th century, to bring about the idea of social security. We all pay in, in order that everyone can get something out at the point they need it. That was developed by the post-war Labour government, with the National Health Service, with an all-encompassing welfare state that provided people with that security. I grew up with that security, that security of knowing you're not going to be destitute, that you will be housed, you will be fed, you will be educated, and you'll be expected to work and make your contribution to society. It's the welfare state ideal. It's been sliced apart, cut apart and destroyed by a combination of low wages, expensive housing, housing insecurity, and cuts to our welfare state and all that goes with it. I was on the Parliamentary Committee in 1986 that examined the then 1986 Social Security Act. I hated that act, I hated everything that went with it. It was the start of the destruction of our social security system. And obviously I voted against it. It will be my pleasure and my pride to lead a Labour government that totally addresses social security from the point of view and the principle that a real society provides a real safety net for everybody. Therefore, I want to announce a number of things today to you. First of all, the, the Department of Work and Pension staff are wonderful people. I've worked with many of them, I know many of them, and I work very closely with the PCS union. Nothing I say about our social security system or poverty in Britain is a criticism of them. It's a criticism of the MP for this constituency and all those other Tories that force through universal credit and the system that goes with it. And so, first off, we will change the name of the DWP to bring back social security, real security for people. 
Now, changing a name, of course, doesn't do everything. But a policy strategy which starts from the principle of a real living wage of £10 an hour, starts from a principle of controlling housing costs and regulating the private rented sector, a principle that means everyone will be able to be better off and will ha have more security. And so, there's a number of things we will do leading up to scrapping universal credit in its entirety. First of all, we will end the capability for work assessment tests that go on and are so brutal to people in their lives and have led tragically to some people taking their own lives and committing suicide because they cannot see any way forward. As a constituency MP, I sit with people going through the pain of being told they're capable for work when they're clearly not, losing benefit as a result and going into a terrible period of stress. This is a deliberate act of government policy to achieve it. Secondly, we will end the bedroom tax because it is unfair, unjust and wrong and punishing of people. Thirdly, we will raise ESA by £30 per week in order to give people something reasonable to try and survive on during the period they have a, a ESA. We will make the carers allowance the same as job seekers allowance and recognise that carers do an amazing job on behalf of those that they love but they shouldn't be impoverished in doing so. Fourthly, we will end the two-child policy in benefit distribution. That will cost about over around two billion pounds per year. Now, I'm sure the Daily Mail and the Express are already with their headlines, Jezza wastes two billion pounds ending the two-child policy. Look at it another way. The two-child policy, where does it come from? Where's the mentality in it? If you have a large family, do the third, fourth, fifth children, if it's a big family, have less value than numbers one and two? Because that's really what it's saying. So that two billion it will cost is actually two billion that's been taken out of the living costs and the mouths of the children of larger families. To me, that is simply immoral and it's got to go. We will end the two-child policy. And our government will do some other things as well. We will pay rent direct to landlords so that uh, tenants don't get into a whole problem of trying to uh, survive at the same time, get into housing debt and housing arrears. And we will uh, end the sanctions regime as a whole and replace it with 5,000 benefit advisors coming into the DWP. The original Social Security legislation of the 1940s said it was the job of the Department of Social Security as it then was to help people and advise them how they go about things for the future. The 1986 Act ended all that and took all that away and introduced the current atmosphere and regime that we've got. So it falls to us, it falls to the Labour Party to do something very, very different.